Um, right, look, we, I want to talk Manchester United because at this football club right now, it's a bit of a mess, right? They've, they've signed a left-back when they've got two left-backs. Um, the transfer business that they're doing is is all over the place. And, and Jermaine, look, the question I ask you, and I think it's, it's, it's right to ask, can you ever see Manchester United in the next 10 years get back to the Manchester United that we all love to watch? It's a good question. Look, 10 years is a long time, and you know... Yeah, but it's because I feel like that's what it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, how teams can rebuild. Liverpool done that within five years. But you always saw slow progress with Liverpool. And with Man United, it seems like they're going backwards. So... Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing is, they've signed a left-back. He's a good player. Um, but they've lost Pogba. All right, he might have been a bad egg. Um, but he's still a great player, though. Ronaldo's not turned up for pre-season training. He's not going on the pre-season tour. He wants out their top scorer. That, to me, says that they're an absolute shambles behind the dressing room and what's going on at the football club. And they, they keep trying to keep things under wrap, Ten Hag coming in. But this place is a mess. Right now, speaking, it's a mess, yeah, and they've obviously got a long a long project ahead of them. And it's the same, again, with Arsenal, you know, it's, when uh, Arteta took over, there was a bit of a, a mess, not as bad as, you know, what Man U's in, but, you know, Arteta had some time to rebuild and set things in motion and yeah. they're looking a, a good, better team now of it. So it's all about time, but it's looking very dark. Mm. It's looking very dark, very Can gloomy. you see them compete next season? Mm. Where, are they, can they, it's, I mean, we, we're talking about Tottenham, Arsenal doing good business, Chelsea have signed Sterling today. You know, Man City, Haaland, Liverpool, Nunes. You know, they're, they're just getting further away from Manchester yeah. United. And it's almost unacceptable. Yeah, the, the, the teams around them are making great signings to bolster their ranks and mm. better their, their season. Who's left out there now for Manchester United to go and purchase? To, to you know, to catch the, the top four. But it's Man United. I, I know, but who's left out there to get? I mean, there's a lot of footballers out there. There is, but you... You've got to be clever with how you yeah. do business. But the recruitment has been shocking, right? We mm. talk about Edward Wood and, and the signings that he's made in, in his tenure was absolutely shambolic. How many of them have actually done any good? None. Mm. There's hardly any of them that have actually done a, a decent job. But, look, it's it's an interesting one. Ronaldo, what, what's your take on the Ronaldo situation where we now know he's off? He's not going on pre-season tour. You know as a player... Right, we've been in dressing rooms. If a player of that stature doesn't want to be at the football club, that's that is an issue, right? That's yeah. a huge issue. Yeah, it's it's massive because some of the younger players will look up to him. His stature is huge around the place. Is a what we all know is a world class player, and if a world class player wants to leave Man United, that's putting doubts. In some of the young stars, you know, Rashford, you know, Sancho thinking, have I made a mistake in staying here or signing here when you've got players like Ronaldo wanting to leave? This is mm. Man United. Why would he want to leave Man United? Yeah. So it is putting a bit of, a bit of disarray in the camp, a bit of, you know, commotion, a bit of uncertainty. So yeah. it's not it's not a good look, you know, trying to sign a player, a, 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 a big figure player, but Ronaldo don't want to be there. Mm. It's going to think, well, do I want to go there then? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I worry about Manchester United next season and over the next few few seasons because I look at the squad of players that they've got and, you know, you, they, they went big last season, I thought, with Ronaldo, Sancho and Varane. They went big in um, and everyone was kind of, you know, almost excited to be like, Man United could be back. This could be the new Man United that we see and it was an absolute flop and disaster. Now the best player, the top goal scorer has left you're looking at this thinking, the, the, the Man United fans must be seriously concerned about where this football club's going. Who's to blame? Do you, do you, do you blame, you know, the Glazers? Do you blame the players? Do you, do you blame the management staff? You can't blame the players. Yes, the players need to take responsibility. Oh, come and on, you can blame them, No, no, I, and I can. can. No, listen. Last listen. season. Yeah, they need to take accountability for their performances at the end of the day, but there's, there's still, it comes from higher above. It comes from the manager and then it comes from the, above the manager, the Glazers and the recruitment, the sporting director. That all funnels down to the players. Yeah. You know, because they are still good players. I remember a guy got in World Cup team of the year. He, he, he was a good player, but things around the club was, you know, it was toxic. Mm. And it, like I said, it funnels down to the, to the team. So until they address, you know, the hierarchy, 
the team's not going to get better. Yeah. All right, let's go to John, who's a Manchester United fan. John. Hi, guys. All right, John, Hi, how mate. are you? Hi, guys. Uh, I could be better with our transfer, which is just coming like a, it's a bit like a soap opera. Well, it is, and 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 John, look, this is this is the mad thing with Manchester United. Over the years, we've watched Manchester United always attract the best players, always had the best players at the football club. If Manchester United come calling when me and Jermaine were playing, you're gone. You know, you, that is the one place you're saying yes, no matter what. Now you look at it and go, what top player is going to go there? Would you want to go there with with the people that are in charge of the football club? And let's start at the top. The owners, they're an absolute and utter disgrace. Would they be allowed to buy Man United now if they but try to buy it the way they did previously? They wouldn't even be able to buy it. They bought a club with no money. They put the debt on the club. The debt's still over five hundred million. They took they took thirty one million pounds so far this year. United make five hundred, six hundred million pounds a year. If there was no debt on that club, the club would be in a far better position. Yeah, but, but they yeah, have yeah. absolutely destroyed the club. They, no, they destroyed the club. Yeah, but John, they they, did, they, they, they brought in Sancho destroyed. last season, brought in Ronaldo, brought in they, Varane. This is the excuse that you, people. They've not put one penny into that football club. They've all the money that's spent on transfers comes in what United make. The Glazers have not put one penny out of their own pockets. Look at what they do to the American football team. They do, they've done exactly the same thing to that thing. Run it into the ground till recently when they won the Super Bowl. Well, they won the Super Bowl. They're an absolute... Yeah. But uh, they're an absolute... They've really run they, into the they ground. Are an absolute, for what they had before, how long did it take them to win that Super Bowl? Let's well, look at that. They don't spend any money. That United. They're never going to spend any money. And while they're at the club, nothing is going to change. It's just... Absolutely, from top to bottom, an absolute shambles. And I don't blame Ronaldo for leaving. I do not blame him one bit. He was given promises last season, and the players just down tools as well. You've got to look at the players. You've got Addy, you've got Addy Maguire. Mm-hmm. Paul, you know, you know what I mean, Maguire, right? Yeah, Harry Maguire, he's put, yeah. Right, Ronaldo's put this sort of thing on, and he's about players taking away his cuts, and he's liked it. The guy is an absolute... That's where it starts. He's not a Man United captain either. He couldn't lead... He couldn't lead a, a ship. He's a guy who's an absolute clown. Mm, well, he's, he's not a not clown. He's, he's a good... He, listen, he's a good player, John. Come on. Not Harry Maguire's player. gone there. He's he is player. a good player. Is he good enough for Manchester yeah. United? Maybe not. But you were playing him in he's in a, in centre-half last season, trying to play a high line. He ain't got no pace. When he was at Leicester, they played deep. When he plays for England, they played deep. Uh, it suited him. But you can't say he's a clown, wears his heart on his sleeve, and he stands up to certain things. But th- th- well, there's so that, much more at the football club that's gone wrong. That's one of the problems last season in the dressing room. He, he, I think Ronaldo didn't want him to be the captain, and there was a bit of clash of personalities as well. Yeah, I would have made him captain. I would have made Ronaldo captain. Last thing I would have done is let him leave. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I say, I don't blame Ronnie for leaving. He's had a fantastic career. He wants to play in the highest league, like Champions League. He wants to win trophies. He's a winner. He's a proven winner, and he's playing with players who've not won anything apart from the goalkeeper. Should have kept Mourinho. He's not going to attract players. Mourinho? Yeah, should have kept him. Get out of here. What do you mean? It was successful. He won in trophies. Toxic. Got them in Champions League. The football they were playing. Hey, well, come on. Okay. Would you, not... you like Jose Marino at the time when you had him or would you be in, like to be in the situation you're in now? John? I didn't want him in the first place. <laughs> he's a has-been. He's, he's an absolute has-been. What's he, what's he done since? Well, he's, he's he won your trophies. He won your trophies and then he's gone to Roma and won a trophy. Wow, the, what, the Euro- Europa Conference? Wow, good, what good, a great good competition. That, to win. Well, they, they, that was the one that they were in when he got there. So he didn't have a choice. Well, is, that the one, is that the one Tottenham were in last season? Yeah, that's the one, mate. And, and we're now in the Champions League. <laughs> Come on, John, don't be bitter. You're in the Europa League. Are you going to win it? Are you going to win it? <sighs> Are we going to win it? I think we've got a chance. I think we've got a chance. Uh, Why not? We've got Antonio well, Conte. You know what? He's doing a good job. I give him. Fair, You'd love fair Antonio fair Conte, John, wouldn't you? You'd love him. Well, we're gonna, yes, that ship sailed. We've got now. We've got a new manager. Who's he's he's on the tide behind his back. 
He's, he's got absolutely yeah. going to struggle next season. I think he's, do you think he might be sitting season. there already thinking, to, you know, Ten Hag, John, thanks for your call. Do you think Ten Hag might be sitting there already thinking, I've made a mistake here. I've come into an absolute mess. Oh, yeah. Because you know what managers are like. You look at it go, Man United, oh, I've got to go. And then you get in there, you go through the door, and after a week you go, wow. Yeah, it's like me when no I went to... No wonder these managers It's like foul. me when I went to Billy Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked in I went the problem, Jesus the difference was, was we couldn't wait to get you out the door <laughs>